Hi, I'm Cliff Curry. I'm the superintendent of Red Bluff Elementary. I wanted to do this video. We have a couple of things to present to you today. Number one, our LCAP plan, the Learning Continuity and Accountability Plan. It's new this year and it's specifically designed to outline the plans the district has for learning and for spending during the school year uh, with COVID-19 around us. So that plan I'm going to talk about a little bit. I'm going to ask for your input. Secondly, I want to talk about the fact that we're in the purple tier in Tama County, what that means, how it pertains to the schools, and for our plan moving forward to look at how we emerge from the purple tier and uh, the potential for distance learning um, and moving towards in-person learning. Uh, I need your input on our LCAP plan. Every district in the state is required this year to talk about how they're responding to the COVID crisis, how instruction is different, and how some of the budget lines they are uh, expending are different than they have been in the past. Uh, for, for instance, things like PPE, uh, additional devices for distance learning, those sorts of expenses and those sorts of plans are modifications to what we normally do. The state is asking us to create a plan, memorialize it. It's a work in progress. It requires input from our stakeholders, and that's you. So essentially, there, we have a link on our website at the bottom of that home page, and it says the LCAP input form. There is also a draft of the plan itself. And what we're asking is for folks to go in, review the draft, and take a look at each of the categories. And I want to review those categories with you. Uh, so for instance, one of the conditions we have to talk about is how we're providing, and if we're providing distance learning, when public health conditions allow, how are we doing distance learning? We are supposed to measure student academic progress during distance learning, participation and efforts to address learning loss as a result of school closures in the last few months of last year have to be built into our plan, and they are. Um, we need to also provide supports for uh, low-income English learners, foster and homeless youth, students with disabilities, and or unique needs. We have to describe what we are doing with that. The state has some mandates for us, so you need to know what those are as well. Um, we have to describe how we're providing access to devices and to internet connectivity. Of course, you're aware of some of the ways that we're doing that. Uh, also, we need to speak specifically about supports for mental health and social emotional well-being during distance learning or during in-person learning. So that is also part of the plan, and there's a section there that we would like for you to review and comment on, like with these other sections. We also need to uh, measure and talk about the way that we do student and family engagement. And of course, this is one form of it. I'm asking you to engage with our plan for uh, learning continuity this year under COVID-19. We need your words of input and advice about the parts of our plan. We need those because as we move forward, the expectation from the state is that those plans change as new situations arise or as we get new information, information that you as parents and stakeholders will hopefully provide. Um, we also need to describe in this document how we are providing meals uh, for students during uh, distance learning or in-person instruction. So we talk about some of the, the, the document talks about some of the resources that we have in our budget. That includes some of the COVID resources that were provided by federal and state government. So we need to talk about how we're using those. Uh, for instance, purchasing new devices, purchasing hotspots, um, those sorts of things. Uh, providing additional time to people when needed to take care of cleaning. These are all parts of this plan, so please um, I'd like for you to take a look at that. I really appreciate the effort that you guys are putting in during distance learning. We're hearing more and more that folks are figuring some of these things out. We know it's a process. We know it won't happen overnight. So thank you for going to our website. The input form is at the, at, on the website. It's called the LCAP input form. So go to the bottom of the page, review the document. Please go and comment on the input form, hit enter. It will send those results to us so that we can tabulate them. I know a lot of you are interested in uh, information on our current county status in terms of our COVID-19 uh, infection rate. Um, what I can tell you is that we're in the purple tier, which means we are at the highest level. Because we were in distance learning when the state changed to the tiering system, it means that since we were in distance learning, we cannot open until we emerge 
from the purple tier. And so I wanted to ex describe how that works a little bit. Essentially, you have to have two full consecutive weeks with none of the metrics that they're looking at in purple. You have to have those levels below purple for two consecutive weeks in a row before you can emerge from purple. Following those two consecutive weeks, you have an additional week where none of those metrics can be in purple again. If you get those two consecutive weeks with that waiting week, you can go to the next level, which is red. Once you are in red, you have two weeks where you have to wait to make sure your metrics don't put you back into purple. If they do not, and you remain in red after two weeks, schools have the ability to be able to reopen for in-person instruction. Now, what that means in practice is that we are always about five weeks out from being able to open and move from distance learning to in-person learning. Now, we will be doing surveys. We're interested in what people are thinking about and how they're feeling with distance learning versus in-person learning. But we don't want to give people false hope that that's going to happen next week. We know that we're at least always five weeks away, and it could be more depending on whether or not we have infection rates spike in our area. Hopefully they won't. Uh, our local authorities are telling us to avoid gatherings, to wear masks, to maintain social distancing, to do all those things that you probably heard before about how to keep the virus from spreading. If we do that as a community, we hopefully will then emerge. We also have the additional factor of our, our, our liability coverage. The district and districts around us um, that, that have the same insurance do not have liability against uh, lawsuits related to COVID. Now, uh, we're going to be working and we have been working with our legal uh, advisors about the district's approach to this, what we can do, and some things to try and figure out exactly what that means and how much of a risk and how deeply we need to alter school operations as a result of it. I can tell you the board's going to be meeting with legal counsel next week and hopefully we'll have some deeper understanding going on at that point. But as of now, at least five weeks out. Because of this, we don't want to survey too early because when we do survey and ask people, do you want distance learning for the rest of the year? Do you want in-person learning for the rest of the year? You need to know that we will have to reshuffle the rosters Students will not have the same teacher necessarily. We may not even have students at the same schools as they were prior to, because that's the mix that we'll have to do to make sure we fill classrooms up, that we get students where they need to be with teachers that are working either in person or in distance learning. So that surveying will be done by teachers directly probably, so they can survey the parents and students in their classroom directly and have a lot more specific information. We need to have everybody respond in that case once we get there because without it we can't get hard numbers for how many people want one versus the other mode of instruction. So stay tuned, it's coming. I want to say also I appreciate the efforts of parents and teachers right now. I know everybody's working really hard to continue figuring things out. I know there's been technical glitches. We have been playing whack-a-mole with technical issues that really don't stem from anything in our systems. They have to do with the massive load that some of these programs are being put under by the hundreds of thousands of people across this country that are using them. What I hear from teachers is that parents are working very hard and actually doing a great job. So keep up the great work. Your, your students appreciate it. And I can tell you that I very much appreciate the work of our staff in helping with that and in pushing these things, and in parents helping with their students. Thanks so much.